Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we commit this time of Bible study to you. Lord, we invite the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us into all truth, to reveal you to us. You said, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have life, and they are they that testify of me. We desire greatly that you, through your word, would, by your Holy Spirit, testify of yourself to us. Help us to see you. We commit this time to you. We ask your will be done. We pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Genesis chapter 22. We're going to read 19 verses, the first 19 verses, and then we're going to look at a couple of scriptures. This, I believe, is one of the pinnacle passages in our study of Abraham. There is a lot here that we could discuss, but our, our purpose in this study is not to look at everything verse by verse, line by line, as we normally would in, in church studying through the Scripture, but we're just looking at Abraham and, and how this applies to our lives personally. So let's just begin reading. In verse 1 it says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt or test uh, Abraham, and said unto, Abra unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest. I'll stop long enough to say that this lovest is the, ver the first time in the Bible that love is mentioned. I think that is incredible and very important for us as we are students of the Scripture. The first time you see something in the Scripture, oftentimes there's something there with that word that will help us as we encounter it through the rest of the Scripture. And this is the first time love is mentioned. It says, And get thee into the land of Moriah, which means foreseen of Jehovah. So something's happening here that's a foreshadowing of something to come. And offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountaintops, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his ass, took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up, and went unto the place of which God had told him. And on the third day, that's interesting, Abraham lifted up his eyes, and he saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder to worship. This also, worship, is the first time this word is used in the Bible, worship. And he says, And we'll come again unto you. And Abraham took the wood and a burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and the knife, and they went both of them together. Only the father and the son went to the top of this mountain. This is between the father and the son. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah-Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast, with, hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, 
that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned unto his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt in Beersheba. It's interesting to me the way God responds to this situation. We know that God knows everything. We know that God knows eternity past, eternity present, eternity future. He knows the beginning from the end. He knows everything. But God makes a statement here. And I believe this statement is not for the Lord. That statement is for us. And, and I believe it ties in with these two words that we find in this passage of Scripture for the very first time in the Bible. Love, or lovest, and worship. And with those two words, love and worship, tied in with what takes place on this mountain where a father gives his only son as an offering. God says something, notice with me, if you will, in verse 12. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know. Now this is interesting for me to read God saying, Now I know, because God knows everything. He knew what was going to happen before it ever happened. But he says this, and I don't believe he says it for his own sake, because we know God knows everything. But he says this for my sake. He says this for your sake. He wants us to latch on to this statement that seems extraordinary from God. But he does it because I believe he wants us, us, to make this statement. Look at this. He says, Now I know that thou fearest God. He says, I know now that you fear me, Abraham. Even though we know that God knows everything, He knew it before, but He's making this statement. He's, he's declaring because of this act, there is a knowing, there is a knowledge because of this act. This act is proof of something. He says, Now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And I believe with all my heart God revealed this to me personally, and I have, I have applied this to my life. I've taken this verse, verse 12, and no, I'm not trying to rewrite Scripture, but God makes this statement, and once again, I, I believe not for His sake, because God knew before this took place, but God is declaring something to you, and He's declaring something to me, that something can be known by this act. What act? The Father offering the Son, His only begotten Son. He says, Now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy Son, thine only Son, from me. And here's how I respond to verse 12. Now I know that thou lovest me, seeing thou hast not withheld thy Son, thine only Son, from me. Me, the first time love is mentioned in the scripture, is right here. Now I know. I say this now to the Father who offered his only Son for me. Now I know. I know. There's no more doubt in my life. There's no reason for me to doubt. This is proof positive. This right here, this very act. Now I know that thou lovest me. Seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. We're going to come back to this passage, so you can hold your finger there. I want to look at a couple of passages of Scripture. The first one is, is very familiar to us. We don't even have to turn there. It's John 3.16, which says, For God so, and here's that word, loved. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He gave His Son because of His love. Now I know that Thou lovest Me, seeing Thou hast not withheld Thy Son, Thine only Son, from Me. For God so loved the world that He gave 
His only begotten Son. John 3.16 John 15.13 Greater love hath no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. This is how I know love. This is how you know love. This is how we know love. Greater love hath no man. There's no love greater than this love. That he laid down his life for his friend or friends. And turn with me to Romans chapter 5. I want to read verse 8. But God commendeth his love toward us. In that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is how he commended his love. This is how he displayed his love. This is how he proved his love. Now I know that you love me, seeing you have not withheld thy son, but thy only son from me. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Same book, Romans 8.32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He gave his son. If he gave his only son, there's nothing he will withhold from us. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up, for us all, how shall he not with he that he that spareth not he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? One more passage of scripture before we return to Genesis. First John First John four verses nine and ten. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. Here in His love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us. And He says it again, and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. I want to read one last time. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. Here in His love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us, and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Turn with me one last time to Genesis 22. That first account of love in the Bible is found here. But there is another word we mentioned was the first account, and that was worship. I want you to look at verse 16. He says, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, there's a repeat, that in blessing I will bless thee, and multiply thee, goes on, in blessing I will bless thee. And so, the first time love is mentioned, this is the proof of God's love for me. First time worship is mentioned, is centered around the Father giving his only son, and God says, because you didn't withhold your son, I will bless you. In blessing, I will bless you. My appropriate response, my only response back to the Father for doing such a thing for me is worship. I will bless you. In blessing, I will bless you. I will bless you. I will worship you. No wonder Paul says in Philippians 3 that I might know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable to him in his Death. Paul says, I will glory in the cross. Now I know. Anytime you struggle or, or struggle with doubt about God's love for you, look to the cross and say, Now I know thou lovest me, seeing thou thou hast with hast not withheld thine only son from me. Now I know that you love me. Now I know. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love. You demonstrated that love on the cross. There's never been a greater love. There's never been a greater display of love. And now we know, may we never doubt it. May we never waver in our faith in the gospel. Thank you. We just worship. That's all we can do is worship you and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen.